What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to some really weird background radio sounds. Thanks for clicking on the show, guys. We're going to be talking about cheap SDRs. And yes, I have an SDR running in the background because we're looking for signals. We'll get started real soon. This is the Patron Picks episode, so right up front, thank you to the patrons for helping support the channel. What is up, everybody? All right, that's enough of that. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today, we are going to be talking about cheap SDR dongles. And what you're listening to is an SDR dongle right now. And cheap is going to be subjective here. We're going to break this down. So let me let me just stop this right now. I'm going to show you a couple of links kind of to, to set the baseline of all of this. But uh, what you're looking at is an SDR software. We are running... Um, SDR Sharp is what this is called. It's most uh, notably connected to the AirSpy dongles that exist out on the market. Uh, but I am using the more inexpensive RTL SDR dongles and the new Elec dongles, which uh, I will be showing you here shortly. But this is kind of what you have to expect when you're playing around with these. So you get to see a waterfall here on the bottom. And... Uh, and a spectrum display on top, and you can kind of click around, right? Just a little poke around a little bit. We're gonna look for some signals. Where are they? Somebody, maybe, maybe in there. To tell us what they were all for. We There's somebody talking. Know. We just had to know that they were there and hadn't broken off. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like the flex display, be, right? Uh, couldn't it be wires coiled up inside those fins? You know, well, I mean, what is all this? Antennas. Like, you're just seeing software. What is it? Well, this is the radio. I'll show you right here. The radio I'm using is this. Uh, is this little black one right here. It's a little dongle and it's connected to a USB cable that goes into my computer. Okay. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to walk you all through that. All right. So come back to me here for a second. So again, thanks for clicking on the ham radio crash course. Let's see somebody who's saying nothing's working. Josh black screen. Everything seems fine. All right. I'm going to keep going then. All right, so as far as the Hammer Radio Crash Course goes, before we dive into all of the fun, let me just say right up front, oh, yeah, my chat room is dead. What's up with that? What's up with that? Let's I'll refresh it. Should work now. There we go. Uh, so hamtactical.com is where we got the merch for the Ham Radio Crash Course. So if you want to check anything out there, like my sweater that I'm wearing and like my shirt, the 1X crew for all of the listeners of the podcast. Thanks for all the support over there. A reminder, all of the campsites are almost sold out for the 2023 Westerbilly Campout, the last week in April. So if you are in and around Ramona, California, I'd like to hang out for a weekend. We're going to be doing a ham radio campout. Uh, so yeah, check, take the link in the description. By the way, all the links for the dongles I recommend, the software that I'm going to be talking about, and everything else is all in the description of the show. <clears throat> Completely unrelated to all that, you want to know how you can sell out of a product really, really fast? Well, you uh, release the pre-order right before I go live. Guess what, guys? The Moby Link 4 is available again. The TNC 4 is available for pre-order. I will drop the link in the description or in the show notes. Sorry, the live stream chat. Uh, I'm completely unrelated to Moby Link. I just like their product. The last time this went live for pre-order, it sold out almost instantaneously, and a lot of people missed out on it. So, hey, it's back. So there you go. All right. So that is that. Let's go back to the tabletop. All right. So a traditional radio, right? Traditional radio here. Goods and bads, right? It's all inclusive in this radio. Once the radio is sold and you buy it, that's all there is to it. 
it does only what it does, right? The antenna receives the RF, it demodulates it, and you hear it out of whatever bits it's got, whether it's a speaker or a headphone jack or whatever, right? Right. So pretty much it's a, it's a done deal once it's purchased. You buy it like that, and that's all it's going to do. You may be able to pipe the audio out into other devices for... I don't know, doing some kind of audio manipulation and whatnot, but uh, that's it. Once it's once it's here in this box, it's all done. So let's let's just get that out of the way for a second. There you go. Now on the flip side, you have these things called SDR dongles, and an SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. Okay, what this is is basically an RF input. So you've got the little coax SMA connection on one side and it outputs a digital signal on the USB side. It is a radio in the sense that it's demod it's doing some level of modification to the RF coming in, but it's utilizing the computer to do the heavy lifting as far as to demodulate AM signals or FM signals, uh, upper sideband, lower sideband. And then from that you can add a lot of radio control like uh, let's see, adding the scanning capability to switch between frequencies very quickly, to understand trunking radios, to do recording, to do audio manipulation like digital signal processing, etc., etc. So in this case, I'm using a knee, uh, this guy basically, the uh, Nualec and the RTL SDRs are both about 30 bucks. The black one is the inexpensive one. Um, I'll pull up the website here so you can kind of see which ones we're talking about. Uh, if you go to the link in the description, there's an SDR list that I have. And in that list, I have basically all the major uh, recommended SDRs that I would I would kind of point you at, which would be the new Alec or the RTL SDRs. And again, these, these require a computer. Generally, Windows is what you want to use, although you can use Linux and uh, Macintosh. Apple, iOS. Uh, I'll also give a shout out to the adsbexchange.com. They have an SDR that is specifically for ADSB decoding and displaying. We run them on Raspberry Pis generally. Uh, and a good tram antenna here, a disco antenna is good as far as what you may want to put up outside for listening on this thing. Now, I'm going to click on this new elect first because there's a, a bit of a nuance here. <clears throat> so it's $114. Oh, my gosh, Josh, you said this was like $30. What what happened to all of this? Why did you go from $25 to $30 into $115? Well, this is a kit, right? And it comes with a bunch of stuff. Now, let's let's pull up the picture here. All right, so the dongle is this guy here in the middle, this, this little guy, uh, the stick. But then above it, you have something called an up converter. And then you've got a series of little adapters, and this little bre uh, this little circuit board thing in the bottom is actually a ballon for running a dipole antenna. And that allows you, obviously, to be able to put up an antenna. This dipole is pretty good. Now, everything we're talking about right now is all receivers. This is all receiver capability. So you might be saying, Josh, why? I'm a ham radio operator. I need to transmit. <coughs> well, you're right in that sense, um, and that's good. But the advantage of having an SDR is it's always like an extra little radio that you can be running in the background with different antennas. Uh, you could be listening to a myriad of things outside of amateur radio even, shortwave broadcast stations. You could be listening to military frequencies. You could be listening to first responders. You could be listening to police, all number of things. And, and it's all generally possible via software that you run. So uh, you could use a Windows laptop to do most of this, like I already mentioned. But there is some tablet software as well. If you go back to my video I did on the $100 Lenovo, Lenovo tablet, we were able to actually uh, use these little dongles into the tablet. Hey, Bill Grant sends a super chat. Thank you so much. He said, thanks for the heads up. Just ordered the TNC4. Yeah, I wonder if they're scheduling their, their release around my live stream. I don't know because I'm watching so closely. I doubt it, but still fun to, fun to think. Now, these devices, particularly the stick here that we're talking about, stop moving. Okay, there you go. The new Elect, N-E-S-D-R Smart. That is a SDR for listening at higher frequencies, right? So call it like 100 megahertz up to 3,000 megahertz about. In fact, let's, let's just double check that if it says 
Uh, it, eh, okay, so 100 kilohertz to 1.7 gigahertz. But the reality is, is everything down on the 100 kilohertz side, like the AM radios, the shortwave stations, all that, that's being facilitated by that up converter, which I have one. I will demonstrate for you how to use it and um, how, how to effectively use it, because it's actually kind of like a thing you've got to learn to do. There's a bit of work to this. Now, I will say that, that as far as SDR dongles go, they're incredibly cheap. They really are. But it involves you, the user, uh, being pretty okay with, with playing around with computers. So let's let's flip it over. One more thing. Let me let me grab the big list because I know there's a quick list guide or quick start guide for RTL. By the way, just because it's from RTLSDR.com, great website and a great SDR. If you end up with the new elect, it, the same rules apply. It's the same start guide and all that stuff. And I, and I did link that uh, in the in the thing below. Now here, uh, there's another one, the big list of RTL SDR supported softwares. So every time I post a video like this, I always get asked, well, Josh, what software are you using? Or I don't like that software. I like, what other softwares do you have? So this is the big list of all the supported SDR softwares that you can use with your dongles. There are uh, just a ton of software titles that you can use. This one looks like old Winamp Studio One. But anyway, let me go back up to the top. What we're primarily going to be using is SDR Sharp just for this one because it's the very simple, simple software to use. Really easy to use. And if you're so inclined, Air Spy also uh, has a series of SDRs that you can buy, and they're available at different online retailers. Um, unaffiliated with me, but the link is in the description. Todd asks, Linux compatible? Yeah, almost all of these are Linux compatible. There's there's uh, Linux software. In fact, let me go back. If you go by yourself an RTL or a Nuelec, Doot, 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 doot. Where did we go here? Where's the big list? There's the big list. So if you just look at uh, next to the operating systems, it'll say what it is. So this is all Windows. But if you go to SDR++, hey, that's Linux, Windows, OS X, BSD. Jeez, BSD, guys. Who remembers BSD? But yeah, the, so they're compatible. You'll, you can find software for pretty much anything for SDRs. So, all right, we're running SDR Sharp. It's literally as simple as downloading the software to somewhere. I just put it in the root directory of C drive, or you can put it in your documents directory, and it'll create just a, you just unzip it and put it in its folder. So let me pull up that folder really fast here, and I'll run the software for you. We're running it now. Let me bring that up. All right, so this is basically the control scheme for this whole thing. And what just happened? What'd you do there, bud? There we go. There we go. Get you right in there. Okay, good. So on the uh, on the hamburger menu in the upper left-hand corner, if you go to source, we lagging here? We lagging here, bud? There we go. Oh, you're not seeing it. <laughs> That's why. If you click on source, you'll get a new window. It's right above my head right here. And I have RTL SDR USB selected. Uh, the first time you run with an RTL SDR, you're going to have to run a .bat file. I'll tell you the name of it. It is RTL. No, that's not it. There you go. Well, there's an installation that you have to do if you follow the uh, the quick start guide. Uh, it was there. Hold on. Let's just go back to the website really fast. It's going to save time. I want to make sure you guys do this right. So the first time you get it, you run SDR Sharp. You're going to run install. Uh. RTL SDR bat. Do I have that file still? Yeah, there it is. Instar dash RTL SDR dot bat. If you run that, I run it as administrator. Just right click on it, run as administrator. Uh, you could use Zadig as well, John, 100%. And in fact, uh, some of you will have to use Zadig. Nope, there we go. Doop, doop, doop. I don't know how to respond to that. Why is it not bringing it up? There it is. Zadig is another application for loading the drivers for it, but uh, install rtl.bat is, is fine. Anyway, once you're done with that, you will bring up your SDR, and then right above my head, it's going to say RTL SDR USB. There's a whole bunch of different options, like the AirSpy actual devices, because this is SDR Sharp. It's what they use generally for this software. But once you have that selected and you hit the play button, you should have magic. 
you should have immediate signals show up if you've got some kind of antenna connected. It may just be white noise, but you'll see something, uh, generally. <clears throat> all right. So once it's all in loaded and installed, you will see these spikes there on the spectrum display on the top. Sometimes that's just interference, but a lot of times it's some kind of signal. And if we use the zoom thing on the side here, we can zoom into it. And you can tell it's like, oh, okay, this is not just interference because there's some kind of information here. See this talking right here? Big signal coming in. Obviously, some kind of human-related signal, not just a digital signal, if you will. So I'm going to zoom back out here. I am on 70 centimeter, but we're going to move down to 2 meters really quick. I'm going to go down here. Lots of signals on two meters. See, these are some interference spikes. Some kind of digital. Oh. It was trying to use narrowband. On the left-hand side above my head, uh, that's what sets the type of uh, mo modulation you're doing. So we're doing narrow FM. You can do AM, lower sideband, upper sideband. Let me find a... There we go. Come back. Yeah, I've been, I've been looking at some really neat off-road trailers, but... Um, there can be lag associated with this. I'm not really into trailer life anymore, um, so I guess I'll have to save some money and get a dog. <laughs> anyway, she'll do hotel stuff, but uh, no, no, more, uh, no more jeeping and no more... So the thing to keep in mind here is because this is leveraging your computer so heavily, you generally need a semi-decent computer or you really just need to only run the SDR software because it's getting all this data coming in from the dongle, which then has to be processed. And just to run through that really quickly as far as processing goes, if you click the gear, um, let me pull up the display here. If you click the gear, you will get a little RTL SDR window. Uh, I have the sample rate to 2.56 MPSPS. That is what I leave it at, and it is on the generic RTL. If you start to crank that up, depending on your computer and your dongle, uh, you may get mixed results. Uh, I do use this with the Jankopotamus or cheap laptops, but I'm not right now. I'm just using the... Um, my standard stream computer for simplicity but they work okay you just may have to adjust that uh that audio rate now obviously it's like okay cool we're listening to people talk i could have done this with a handheld blah 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 etc okay well uh there's more than that obviously we're gonna go into this a little bit further but so far like hey 25 30 bucks for being able to do this not bad let's go down to just uh, january February. <laughs> Is airband? Yep, airband. And you can see that right by the. It calls out what it is when you have when you have it selected. As a side note, while you're scrolling around, let me mute this a little bit. 
Uh, these buttons up here will allow you to either slide up through the VFO um, or you can center your tuning if you want to. And then the rightmost one is what your step increment is when you are scrolling. So if you click the one on the top here, um, you'll be able to, those guys up at the very, very top, the, the one that looks like an H, the letter H, will allow you to change your step. Nathan asks, can you set this up to make it almost like the web SDRs to access when you're not at home? Um, you can, and that's going to be, that would be its own video to have to do that. This is very much just the, like, here's what this all is. Take a look at, uh, at what it's all about. Uh, you can, but it's, it's more involved than just flipping a switch on this guy because you're going to need to have a way to tunnel back in, so likely some kind of VPN setup, not for the faint of heart for some people. A lot of people just take their uh, their SDRs with them when they go places um, and just use this as their receiver. Ooh. I forget where the weather channel is. Was it in the 30s? Where's Noah hiding? Vamos a ir entonces en ese orden, empezamos por el sur de nuestra región con la Tango India 3, el Víctor Mike Bravo. Buenas noches, adelante. No, oh, thank control you. Escucha. That was way off. There we go. Edge Indoor Airport, Giddy. It's orange. It was hardly cloudy. The temperature was 54. You're starting to get the idea. Airport, it was cloudy. The temperature was 58. Okay, let's let's go a little higher. So let's let's take this up. Let's take this up and dive around a little bit. So I'm, I'm looking for say, hey, there's something. This is digital, likely. We'll come back to digital in a second. I want to talk about that because you can actually decode some digital with these. You have to run secondary software, which we'll we'll talk about. It's uh towards the advanced side of this, so we're gonna wait for the last couple of twenty minutes or so of the show. See, for example, this is likely digital p25 or something along those lines let's keep going down though and i'm going to zoom out i just really want to see what's out here because i didn't really play with it up at this high frequency while i was getting ready for the stream i uh like to keep one of these in a bag and even if i'm not like taking hf radio i'll bring something like this and yeah you, you can get into hf with this i'll show you how here shortly uh here we go. Maybe? No. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for I think that's just uh noise. Or not. No, it's fine. All right. Enough of that fun. I doubt I'd be able to hear the pirates from here, but we can try. So I do have this connected to my disc gun, which is a pretty good receiver up through, I think, 2,000 megahertz. All right, Tom, I'll try 470, and then we're going to show you HF. So let's get out of this. Got some stuff. Yeah, this is all digital up here. We'll come back to digital in a second. Uh, 915 is Laura. 915 megahertz is where Laura's at. A lot of this is all going to be digital. Yeah, see, that's digital. And by digital, I mean digital voice. So we're talking about digital voice. Okay. 
enough of that fun. Let's let's so VHF. You just plug it into an antenna. You just take the little stick and you go, hey, I'm doing VHF stuff type frequencies. So 100 megahertz uh, and NXDN. Yep, and Poxag is up here, which is pagers, all that fun stuff. All right, so re repeating myself, so I make sure I, I cement the the message. The sticks, and let me lower this down so I don't deafen myself. There we go. The sticks are SDRs, software defined radios, right? They do basically 100 megahertz up through 2000 megahertz ish, 1.5, 1 1.2 1 to 2000. So a lot of your VHF, UHF radios, your first responders, POXAG, pagers, trunking radios, that kind of stuff is what these guys are going to do right out of the box. If you want to go to HF with these, so you got basically two options you can get an up converter to make these guys work on HF, or you go get an SDR play. SDR plays are HF capable, and they already have the filtering built into them. And once you add up like the kit with the SDR and the the up converter, it already costs the. It's already priced of the RSP one A. RSP one A is this uh, base level uh, SDR play device rsp one a I really like this one I've used this this has been mine for like five years I've used this on so many videos it was the video that I did most of my VHF UHF radio like uh, SNR testing with this is the radio I used love that radio but that's not what we're talking about today we are going to use this up converter and I'm going to show you how this works so I'm going to disconnect from my disco and antenna and I'm going to take the lead that goes into the up converter here. The up converter needs its own USB source in the form of a USB B connection. There's a switch on the side to go to up convert. When you do that, the light will change. It will say that it is up converting. And this connection here is going to my step IR, which I have connected right now. So. Uh, now, when I go back to my SDR, so let's bring that back up, and I hit the play button above my head. Signals are all gone. What happened? Okay, so an up converter basically takes all of the signals that you were that that are available at HF, and it bumps them up to 100 and basically 25 megahertz. So let's start by going down. To there so we've cleared it out so that's actually like am long wave radio so if i take my local am my big booming station that's right down the street which is 640 so if i just remember 125 megahertz and we're just going to count up from there so 640 Years or older to purchase player claim. There's my AM station 640. So we are now receiving AM slash shortwave. KFI AM 640. There you go. Everywhere on the iHeartRadio app in Azusa, so we're using Avocado that hardware. Got it. We're using the 125 to 100 megahertz IF tuning frequency. So it's basically taking all the HF frequencies that that the the RF that's floating out there, and it's bumping it all up, up converting it to 125 megahertz. At least that's what this new Alec Hammett up device does. So if we just add frequencies to this, so for instance, let's go to do, do, do. Hold on one second. I'm going to move the SDR or the uh, step IR while we do this. I'm going to go 240, and then I'm going to add uh, 14 megahertz. So we're going to go up one. Hey, what's all that? It's, it's basically 20 meters we just rolled into by adding 14 megahertz. So now, if I go to upper sideband, and we zoom way in, I'm going to slow this down a little bit, too. Why is it so fast? Who made you so fast? Correct. Good. Uh, so 
basically, if your SDRs, if your SDRs are a hundred dollars, let me mute this for a second. If your SDRs are like a hundred dollars or more, it's most likely you don't require an up converter. They already have the components inside to allow you to do it. It's only if you want to take something like a new elec or an RTL SDR and bump it up. So what is the freak right now? I am on basically 14 megahertz dot 223 kilohertz. And so if I wanted to go, let's say I wanted to go down to 40, for instance, you can do this easy by just kind of going back to square this all out. 25 was the center IF frequency about, and we can just add seven to this, right? So, okay, great. And we should be pretty close to 40. Come on. Yeah, right here. Oh, it's Matt. Matt, uh, M A T T? Yeah, that's right. Very good. You got a great signal here. Oh, thank you. You're uh, 15 over down here. Great signal into Southern California. We got several other gentlemen on the frequency, um, so they may, may want to jump in as they well. Rolled into a net. But, um, so what signal. is this? Sounds great. 125. Yeah, really good too. Uh, 132 uh, minus 125 on gets you anyway. 7 megahertz with 198 kilohertz behind it, which that is the voice portion of 40 meters. So that's basically how an up converter works. We have a, um, a double antenna up on the roof, and we're running a an anon radio for the transceiver. Now, a number of you are saying, use the offset tune, use the offset tune. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> you can offset this. You can say, I'm just going to always have, and again, let me let me make sure we're, well, we're playing the same game here. You have to have the up converter connected to the SDR dongle to do the up conversion, and it has to be switched on to up convert. You can put this into bypass. In fact, watch what happens when I do that. So I'm going to go back to the SDR, and I'm going to turn it into bypass. So we just lost everything, right? It went back to 132 megahertz. If we back that up, come on. Yeah, well, what did we get? What was that? Oh, come back. Some kind of beacon. Yeah, some kind of beacon. Anyway. Now I turn the up converter back on, and now I'm up converting HF. So yes, you can um, you can do a offset, but I'm showing you guys what this looks like if you if you don't do that. So that you at least understand what's going on. Don't don't I guess don't I'm not saying don't cheat yourself, I'm just trying to describe the whole thing the whole kit and caboodle the complexities with it and of course you can set a shift offset i believe you can bring that up by yeah offset tuning uh it's under let me show you Oop. there we go so if you go to the gear and you enable offset tuning here it allows you to be able to set an offset so you can do that uh, as well, obviously, this is an RF device, so this is gain control as well. So you can see we're diving it down, picking it back up. Okay. Uh, okay, good question. Good question. I feel like if you want to get into this and you have the money to throw at it, and we're talking $100, right, and you are interested in this, I think the uh, the RSP1A is a a really nice starting point for for getting into this. They're available at, at Ham Radio Outlet, uh, a number of other places. That uh, 120 bucks is basically what they run for. 
Otherwise, you have to go down the road of having the dongle and the up converter to do HF effectively, which is not bad. In fact, I have uh, I have the website up. So yeah, 125 bucks for the RSP1A. Not bad. Not bad at all. I think that's pretty fair uh, for, for that. For what it is, uh, the RS Spy or the uh, Air Spy is also very good. I still think 125 bucks is cheap. I appreciate most of you may not, but the fact that it is such a uh, really capable receiver, because it, it, it is a general coverage receiver, basically. Yes, you have to supply a computer, but you likely already have a laptop or something like that. Uh, it's it's really handy. It's it's a really really handy thing. And I know Don had a Don said something. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So I also want to make a, a big shout out to just the general concept of SDRs, right? These dongles is just like dipping your toe into the world of SDRs. A lot of our HF radios transmit receive capable HF radios are all SDRs now. The 7300s obviously an SDR. Most of the Aces are all SDRs. The 710 is their new SDR. Uh, Don is talking about his very expensive radio, but a really good one, the Anon. Uh, and then you have the Hermes Light or Hermes, depending on where you come from. Uh, the Hermes Light is like a super really, really nice uh, HF capable transmit and receive uh, SDR that goes for, I don't know, Don, you correct me in the chat, was like 400 bucks or something like that. Pretty good. Uh, so it, it, they're, they're really fun. I, I know I don't need to sell this. You're kind of already watching because you find this stuff interesting, but, and by the way, thank you all for watching. And thanks again to the patrons. The patrons voted on this episode. So they're the one that made it happen. Yeah. About $400 for a transmit and receive capable SDR. So it functions off of software like this, but you have the capability to also transmit with it and do HF and do all the things. Very cool. All right. So yes, of course, because this is a computer based software, you can do other things like decode digital signals. I'm going to walk you through some of this because it's, it's a little perilous, I have to say. If you want to watch some of my other videos, I've done videos on the SDR play software, which is I feel I feel a bit more uh, full featured. They have a little bit more plugins available that are all free after buying one of their SDRs. Uh, yes, exactly. You say you, you already nailed it. SDR Uno per, is is SDR Uno is the software for SDR Play, and it's it's really really good. Uh, there's a lot of plugins and all that other stuff. So, so here's let's talk a little bit about uh, digital. So digital, in the case of SDRs like the RTL SDRs and whatnot, also require you downloading plugins and being able to use them. But a lot of them are like free plugins. You have to kind of download from the internet. So let's talk a little bit about that. There are um, websites. Let's go back here. Where is it? Yeah. So simple DMR plugin for SDR Sharp now available. And if you click on it, let's see, where is it? Is it this guy? Yeah, it's this guy. It goes, oh, site can't be reached. Well, shoot, what do we do now? Well, we, we copy the URL and we bring up the Wayback Machine and we type in the URL and it goes, hey, there is some action. So we bring up one of the days it had action, then it got crawled. For all of you who've never used WebSDR, this is what it looks like. And we get PHP error, PHP error. But if you keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Hey, we found it. RTLSDR.ru. So it's a Russian site. And if we right click, we can uh, we can translate to English. So use your translate functionality. And there you go. You can download the plugin for it. It's right here. Um, and that's great under the little download button. Now, once you have that, then you can actually drop that into your... Um, your plugins folder for SDR Sharp, and it kind of works, kind of, kind of, kind of. <clears throat> so let's go back to SDR. I've already had that uh, plugin set. Uh, I have had not great luck with it. It's an older plugin. Some of this stuff is uh, kind of old, but if you uh, hamburger menu again, and in fact, I'll, I'll pull it back out here so you guys can see. Hamburger menu, and if you scroll down, if you scroll down to plugins, DMR or simple DMRs right there, 
and you get this little window above my head and it's just kind of like real simple like it it it's either going to work for you or it's not. It, for me, it didn't. It doesn't work very well. So there's another way, but it's it's more complicated, and we'll get into that. So let's go up to. I've got a frequency saved here. There may be somebody's talking on. We'll see. No, it doesn't look like anybody's on there. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, good DMR, man. There we go. Maybe. Definitely something. That sounds like DMR. Okay. So he found DMR, but hey, it's not doing anything with it. What's the deal? Because it's just, it's just not working that well. The other way to go is DR, uh, DSD plus. So if I go back, yeah. There is another way. Big list. No, that's not what we want. It's Air Spy. Is this the one? Uh, yes. So let's translate this bad boy again. All right, new plugin. This is called DSD Interface. And DSD Interface generally requires, uh, so it's the plugin for SDR Sharp that you can download via the link. Uh, not necessarily saying you do this in case you don't want to, you know, you worry about your computer or whatnot. Um, but it will allow you to run something called DSD+. Plus. DSD+, Plus is a terminal application, um, which I have running, so I'll show you. Open Web SDR does too. Yeah, so Don, all good points. Uh, we we're kind of looking for just the cheap ones. Uh, there are web SDRs, Kiwi SDRs. You can buy the hardware for it. They're they're over multiple hundreds of dollars. And that does open a web client if you wanted to. And you could go uh, back into your web SDR station from home. In fact, we could probably look that up as we draw close to the end here. Uh, open web SDR is free? I thought you had to have hardware. Huh, okay. Well, that beats uh, the heck out of screwing around with a lot of this stuff. Better not be something where I have to. Yeah, it's done. If it... I'm on a Windows computer, man, <laughs> is it? Plus, the website's not even opening. How do I get it? It's all Linux. <laughs> of course, it is. Of course. Thanks. All right. Very helpful. I can't use anything. But it is, you should probably go use that if you want. <laughs> uh, all right. Dig okay. So there's another link in the description for RTL SDR decoding digital using uh, DSD. So to do that is a bit more of a, of a pain. But I'll, I'll show you how it works here. So you bring back up your guy. And uh, I've got it right here. This guy is the interface setup. It is a terminal that pops up when you click Start. And there's a whole bunch of windows. See, it's already broken again. It broke on me. Where is it going? Ah, that's why. One second. You have to change your audio output to the appropriate output and start it up nope didn't like that okay yeah okay stop that I'll stop that guy yep that's right trying to demonstrate this so that I can go back and show you, but it may not work out for us. Because it's kind of a pain. Let's 
I hate this app. <laughs> 2015, trying to download and decode DMR. Not the greatest time. But this is kind of what you can expect if you start to monkey around with this stuff. Like if you caught my um, my NOAA weather uh, decoding video that you can go back and watch. I used the um, SDR Uno software with an RSP1A SDR play device. And I was able to output the audio from what the SDR was picking up to the weather software. And the weather software did the downlinking, or not the downlinking, the modulation of it back into the the digital image format that we were able to see on the screen. Uh, generally, all of the connectors are SMA if you're doing um, these kind of SDR type devices. All right, we're going to take one more crack at this because this has just not been a good working uh, software title for me. So I'm going to stop that guy. I'm going to stop that. And we're going to, yeah, okay. Uh, by the way, it, it, it uses these audio input numbers for being the one that we want to connect to. Audio, BB audio, yep. So we're going to save, we're going to go both, left, auto, good. All right, let's see if we can find some. Oh, there should be audio. It doesn't like it. Is it muted? That's why. Here we go. So now you can see the little blue window, this guy right here. When the uh, signal pops up, it is reacting, but we're not hearing it. So it's not working right now. Which is kind of a pain with uh, with some of this software as you, you get it set up once and then it sometimes doesn't work. It's kind of the fun the fun aspect of SDRs. Well, let's hop around a little bit. Maybe we're just on a bad. No, I'm sure that's digital. It should be able to work with that. Mm, wrong, sorry. Nope. Yeah, see, we've got signal, but it's it's not liking any of it. It's kind of the nature of some of this stuff. Um. All right, one more thing that we could try. It's not even responding. What a pain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so so Jason Jenkins is right. So, okay. Um, there are free versions of DSD Plus that have existed for a while that have been out there for a while, but a lot of this stuff starts turning into paid for at some point because the creators of it go like, well, I've been developing this for years and I really should get paid. Um, and they're not wrong. But the downside of that, it's like, okay, now you gotta you gotta open the wallet and uh, get to work on on getting some of this stuff and paying for it, uh, which is fine. I, I I have nothing against that. But making some of this older stuff work, because you're talking about 2015, I think was the last time that DST Plus was updated in its current um, base stat, uh, the stable release. At least that's the one I think I'm running off of. Um, but anyway, 
I guess the point here is that between, you know, the Noah stuff, which I've done in the past, and this, among other things, because this will do, and, and just so that you guys can all see it, there is a, a decode options button, and it'll do D star, NXDN, P2 phase, uh, P25 phase one. Uh, it should do Poxaggle. I don't see it here. DMR, Motor Turbo. It'll do all of that once you get it set up, but you, you have to go through the process and some of the legwork of doing it. But for a one-hour video of uh, just kind of an intro to why you may want one of these, which I think you should, if it were me, uh, I would probably point you in the direction of the SDR Play RSP1A. I think that is a, a very nice SDR. But uh, that is up to you to decide. So you're going to have to tell me in the chat. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Um, particularly if the software is kind of old and uh, kind of funky, it's, yeah, you know, there's only so much we can do if it doesn't want to work for you. Uh, Jason, no. So I didn't do any GNU radio stuff. I didn't mention Linux at all. We we're just talking about the dongles. If you want to play with GNU Radio. GNU Radio is actually a Linux port that you can get. That is a whole deep dive of a thing if you want to do that. You can do that, though. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely takes it outside something that we would do uh, on, on one of these if I didn't have a lot of time to make a, a video on it. Because that would take a while. But yeah, is there anybody in the chat with questions? I'm going to grab another beverage. So you guys start typing your questions at Hammer to Crash Course or write the word question in your question. Otherwise, uh, I hope you all join us over on the Discord after chat, which we're going to be going to after that. I'll have another live stream that you can follow me on to. And in those chats, we answer your questions live on voice. So either join us by taking the link in the description or just hang out and there'll be a new live stream here shortly. But feel free, ask your questions now on SDRs, please. Uh, Don asks, is this, is this STR, Don? Is this an STR question, Don? He asked if I've seen uh, the modern ham talk about TCPI over 400 megahertz. Uh, I have not, but isn't that kind of what we already do with packet? <laughs> I mean, the, the stack is different, but. I can. I can sell the, the creepy hands. In fact, uh, why not? I'll, I'll throw them on the uh, the Amazon store. So if you go to the SDR, um, if you go to that SDR link to my Amazon store. Oh my gosh, there's so many different types of tiny hands and, and feet now? Oh my God. What is even happening? This is frightening. What have I done here? Hold on. We're going to get this added. Okay. <laughs> so now. There you go. <laughs> Tiny hands. Tiny hands are there for all your SDR needs. Question. Can the little hand operate the SDR? Yes, of course. Question, the RTL SDR version 3 dongle does not need the up converter. Oh, interesting. RTL SDR version 3, you say? Hmm. Well, that's one linked, but I don't think that's true. So does an HF bias T? Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. So it's saying can tune 500 kilohertz 1.7 instantaneous bandwidth. HF reception below 24 megahertz is direct sampling mode with reduce. Yeah, so no, it's the same thing. No, um, no, 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 no. The, the signals, okay. The, the size of the thing hasn't changed. 
it's not going to do it. So yes, the, the little sticks will all do HF, but you have to run it in direct sampling mode, which will just tank the performance. If you've ever run one of those little sticks in direct sampling, uh, it's not great. But yeah, you can do it. You can always do it. No, they don't. Uh, I, I kind of already talked about that. Priyansu. Is that Priyansu tank? Uh, I talked about it earlier. There are SDRs that do transmit, like the Hack RF and the Hermes or Hermes or Hermes Light will transmit. But those are all multiple hundreds of dollars. These are just the $100. Uh, Jay Wind, are you using it in direct sampling mode? I don't know what to tell you. I'm literally on the version three, and it says it will run in direct sampling mode, which will which will decrease performance performance, which is true. It will. I'm not, again. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying that it's not the best time. That's why the up converters exist. Let's see. Uh, show them the difference. Are we on pass through? We are. Okay. <clears throat> So this is regular performance. Let me turn all this stuff off. Hold on. So you can hear it. What's going on? One second. 105, a crash still blocking the three left lanes. You're jammed up there. Yeah, you got that right. I don't like to be on this wind system too long. All right, so I think if we go into this guy. Okay, we're going to go back here so I can show you this. Stop. So we're going to click and stop. We're going to go to the gear. And I think we can go direct sampling. Yep. So now... Let's go to, oh, get out of there. there we go. Not great. And we should still be on the right antenna. But this is not a version three, so I, I imagine the version three is better. I'm not I'm not doubting that the version three is better at this, but this is usually not the very good. So hold on, let me let me stop. I'm probably on the wrong IQ path. Yeah, I think. Hold on. No. It's not a good time. Uh, I tried using the Calibri Nano and I had a, a bad time with it. I'll tell you what. They sent me it and I sent it back to them because it. I did not like the software. The software was kind of a pain. Um, okay, so let me go back now. Let me Let me flip this around and I'll turn on the up converter. And... Let me change the sampling. Back to quadrature. And... Uh, again, and I, I'm not. Um, 
I'm not saying you can't. I, I really want to be really clear. When you're doing all this SDR stuff, you're paying like 25 bucks for this thing, 30 bucks. Go nuts. If you want to do it on HF, great. Uh, go try out all the SDR softwares until you find one that works for you. Again, I'm using SDR Sharp. Uh, Jesus freak here, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he does SDR++. Doesn't slow down that much using direct sampling. No problem. So go nuts. Yeah, I, I, it's... These are devices that are be meant to play around with. You're meant to go do fun little stuff with them and fun little projects. So, yeah, go nuts. Anyway, that was the, the point of this video. Hopefully to whet your appetite for getting into SDRs because they're a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, Don, by the way, Don N5SKT, if you join us on the uh, Discord, Don's a good guy to, to ask about uh, SDRs. He's going to point you towards some potentially very expensive ones. But he's tried a lot of them out, and he's, he's tried a lot of the software, so. Uh, Jason, no, I only talked about the cheapy uh, newest, newest, new Alec and the RTL SDRs and the uh, the up converters, just the cheap stuff. We didn't get into the other stuff because, frankly, and this is this is going to be you know, this is just me talking. These things are kind of cheap. Uh, once you have one that works, you don't need like a ton of other ones. I do, again, like the SDR plays and the ones like it. So Air Spy. And some of the other stuff. <laughs> Tracy, get out of here. <laughs> Try to troll me here. Uh, I, I, I like the ones that are like $100, the SDR plays. But the dongles are fine, too. You just might need an up converter to get the best performance out of it. So anyway, that's going to do it, I think, guys. I would love it if you joined us over on the uh, Discord for the after chat where we take your questions live for ham radio or otherwise. We'll try them all. But big thank you. To the patrons, this is the patron picks episode. So we really do, I really do, and so does my wife, because this goes to support the podcast. If you like the podcast, consider becoming a patron. It's only a buck. Can you imagine a buck per podcast? Or sorry, a buck for four podcasts, because we record at least four times a month, assuming we're not sick. That's like, that's like three hours per episode. A buck for 12 hours of content ain't bad, I'll tell you what, if you don't include the YouTube videos. Yeah, this uh, all this goes to uh, to pay for Leia's purse. That's that's right. <laughs> so do uh, do appreciate all the patrons for helping to support what we do out here in all the different facets. As far as the Westerbilly campout goes, I'm trying to put a couple of things together. I don't think we're going to do like a solder project or anything like that, but I think we're going to have some radios out there because I, I recently came into a, video, a radio that I didn't expect I would own. Um, I'll talk about it on the after chat. But I was given an opportunity to buy one of uh, Jerry, uh, KG6HQD's uh, radios. And I jumped at it mainly because I kind of wanted that radio to begin with. And... Um, it just I guess sentimental a bit but I did I took it on a poda and I rocked a kilo in um 90 minutes or so and so I'm gonna have that radio and the Yesu 857 and the 7300 among some other radios and we're gonna do like a live comparison to hopefully squash all the uh, all the opinions on those radios good or bad i think they're all good radios but uh we're gonna have a head-to-head -head competition with an antenna switch on the buddy hex we're gonna go through the bands so the western billy camp out's gonna be a lot of fun yeah i think it was right around uh 90 minutes i got 109 contacts in 90 minutes pretty good it was pretty insane it was on 10 meters it was non-stop non-stop so all right, all. I hope you join us on the after chat. We'll, I'll pull up the. Um, I'll probably pull up the the go box that I that I bought just so I can show you guys. Um, oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Sorry, a kilo. That's not a kilo. You're right. <laughs> I did not do that. You're right. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. I didn't read it that way. Anyway, all right, guys. I will wrap things up. Yeah, math is hard. <laughs> you got me. You got me. All right, guys, uh, take it easy. We're going to go off to the after chat, and I'll talk to you there. See ya. <laughs>
It's true. Never map on stream. Still coughing. <laughs> <laughs> 